All right, thanks for checking out the GSP channel. And uh, I'm going to start a series right now on boost control methods and hopefully cover everything you need to know. And quick disclaimer, this is my experience and my opinions and my knowledge. And um, if you have a differing opinion, totally fine. But this is what I've run into and um, hopefully it's helpful. So uh, first things first, we're going to start off each one of these videos with um, basically a different type of boost uh, control as we go and uh, today's is going to be wastegate only so what does that mean um, typical boost control method for a turbo I'm sure everybody's heard of it is changing your wastegate spring um, if you change your wastegate spring to a higher pound spring um, you typically make more boost and I say typically because it doesn't always work out that way and I'm hopefully going to be able to explain to you why and what decisions that you need to make uh, in terms of how to choose a spring with your current and future goals in mind and help you understand exactly how a wastegate works to start with so that we know what we're going to do later on in order to change how much boost we make. Um, so the first things to kind of cover really quickly and I'll, I'll buzz through it as fast as I can. The way the turbo works, and yes this does apply to, to turbos um, and not really superchargers uh, for one major reason and that is that the turbo is uh, divorced from crankshaft speed. Superchargers control your boost by changing the pulley um, and are usually not always linear with crankshaft speed. Where Turbos are awesome because we can make a ton of boost at low engine speeds and less up top or even more up top it's Sometimes in cases where you can't get there with uh, with the supercharger. So uh, The way that a turbo setup works is your exhaust gas coming out of the engine goes into a turbine uh, into a turbine housing that then crosses the turbine and basically it spins a wheel like a hamster wheel um, and that is connected by a shaft to a compressor wheel that then is taking fresh air from outside in and it's compressing it and, and creating boost that goes through a lot of times in intercooler, not always, and into your engine. So the way that you control how much boost that the turbo makes is by varying the speed of the, in this case, turbine and compressor, um, in order to match the current boost level that you want for a given engine speed uh, and in some cases throttle angle. So uh, the way that that works, the, the way you slow a turbo down is by bypassing excess exhaust gas uh, around the turbo so that it exits to atmosphere uh, and doesn't speed up the compressor wheel. Um, the way that you do that is through a waste gate. It takes waste exhaust and gates it to atmosphere. Um, so the way that it does that is in this image that I have drawn here. This is attached to your exhaust pre-turbo, uh, and in, in some cases it's actually mounted on the turbo, outside the scope of the video, but um, what the way that this works is you need to have a good flowing wastegate and a good flowing um, wastegate entry so that it's not hard for exhaust gas to bypass this valve and this is this is an actual valve that will move up and down and as it moves up exhaust gas goes around it and then vents to atmosphere so I'm going to go ahead and just add there we go so obviously whenever we're talking about boost control we need to control this valve um, this wastegate valve is effectively what controls the speed of your turbo. So there's a lot going on in this gate and typically you would think, okay, well, all I need is this. So what's all this going on up here? Um, this is called the dome, the top half of the gate. And then uh, I don't know what everybody always calls it, but I call this the, the reference area. So the way that a wastegate works, and I'm sure you guys have seen different sizes, the, the size is the actual size of the valve, 44 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 60 millimeter, dual 44s, whatever you want to use. The size of that is the valve, and there's two things that cause your wastegate to, to open. 
and then there's two things that cause your wastegate to try to not open. Um, the things that open your wastegate are back pressure and your, your reference boost. So this opening here to the top, the, the blue line represents a diaphragm. So the top cavity is separated from the bottom cavity. And what we're doing here, if we apply reference, if we apply a, a reference pressure to the bottom side, this needs to come from your, your post turbo compressor side pre-intercooler. So what you're really trying to do here is uh, apply boost pressure to the underside of the diaphragm so that it forces against the spring. And as this pressure increases, the diaphragm goes up, the valve raises up and lets the exhaust gas out. If you apply spring force here, it holds the pressure down. This is your wastegate spring. So back pressure in your exhaust system, if you have a really small turbo um, and uh, you know not a very free-flowing exhaust, then you're gonna have a lot of back pressure and you're gonna have to put more spring in. If you have a really free-flowing exhaust and it's a huge uh, you know, uh, turbine housing and um, you don't have a back pressure problem, um, then you don't have to put as much spring in in order to make the same amount of boost. Uh, that's why it's not just as simple as I'm gonna put a 12 pound spring in and make 12 pounds of boost. Um, it often doesn't work that way. You're either gonna be on one side or the other of it, and I've gotta be honest, most of the time people that put a 12 pound spring in end up at about like six or eight. Um, a, lot, not, a lot of the turbo setups are not as free flowing as they should be. Um, so that's, that's really the, the way that you're gonna control your boost with wastegate only, um, is the spring. A lot of guys, some people have said that you can take the reference line off the, of uh, your, your wastegate if you're not making much boost. And I've done that in a couple of cases where I was trying to do some troubleshooting. But I'll be honest with you, I'm kinda like, I'm kinda off that now. Um, the reason I say that is because you're not really controlling the boost you're controlling the back pressure. If you don't have some kind of reference to how much boost you're making in this volume here, um, all you're working off of is your back pressure. Uh, so the other caveat to that is make sure that your all your plugs, sometimes these wastegates have three or four openings in them, make sure that if you're not using an opening, it's plugged. Um, I also have seen some cases where uh, you guys will plug the dome. Um, that's up for debate. It really doesn't matter uh, whenever you're not using any kind of boost control method other than the wastegate. Um, but really what it comes down to is back pressure and your wastegate spring. And uh, in, in this case, you gotta pick a spring, you gotta go run the car, you gotta look at your data logger and see how much boost you made. If you are good enough to look at how much boost you made, uh, on the the handheld while it, while you're out making a pull, then clearly you're not making enough boost. So that being said, GSP out.